Well, hello, and welcome to another tutorial. Now, this one is taken from the second episode of my presentation DNA series on my YouTube channel at Practicalize. So the slide that we're going to look at today has got quite a simple job, but there's a lot of moving parts. So basically this slide, I designed it to give the idea that there is a journey that we have to take through the three phases of preparing our presentation and that that should all be heading to a destination or a target point. So let me show it to you. So we start off with this red locator pin indicating the beginning of the journey. And then we go through phase one, which is the splurge phase where we get everything out. Then we go into the edit phase where we trim everything down and make sure there's no wasted elements. And then there's the organize phase where we work out the order and sequence of things in order to reach that destination point powerfully. So that's the job of this slide. Let me jump out of it and I'm going to click down one slide. So we've just got a blank gray slide and I've kept the guides that I used when I was designing the slide just to speed things up a little bit. So first thing that we need is a shape. So we can go to the shape menu here. And I'm going to type in the search bar here, location, which is how I found that location pin. That's what we want. Now I'm going to drag that down just so it's at the conjunction of the baseline guide and the first vertical guide. Now I would like some color. Um, so let's give it a red color, make it nice and bright. Okay, so there's our starting point. So next thing we need to do is get that blue shape. Now, it's not my favorite tool by any means, but I used the shape tool, uh, not the shape tool, the pen tool in Keynote. So I'm going to click here where the bottom of the locator pin is, and then I'm just going to click on the guide here, and this is the highest that my shape is going to get. Then it's going to drop down during the edit phase, maybe a bit lower than that. Then it's going to drop quite a lot towards the end of the organize phase. Then I'm just lining up with the guides to get all my corners square. Now you'll notice at the moment there's a plus symbol next to the uh, pen tool because it's expecting me to add another point. But if I hover over a point that already exists, that plus shape turns to a circle and that's indicating that clicking, like I've just done, will now close the shape and we can treat it like any other shape, give it a color and a fill and all of those sorts of things. You'll also notice that when I hover over any of these lines, I get a midpoint which goes red outlined when I hover over it. So I'm going to click down once and drag out and it's going to turn that into a curve, which is very nice. This one, I'm going to do the same, but drag the curve in. So now we've got a bit of a shark's fin effect because this top point is a linear corner and we want it to be sort of a bezier corner where you've got a curve on both sides. And the same is going to be true of this point here, just to try and smooth this shape out a little bit. So it's a wee bit lopsided and it's gone above the uh, guide there that we set. So let's try and calm things down a little bit. Maybe drag that down. Yeah, that looks pretty good. What I'm looking for is just a nice gradual slide in. I think this point could come down even further. Yeah, that's pretty good. And then we're going to drop this point quite a lot down. So it's quite thin at the end there. It's just curving up a little bit, isn't it? So let's do that. Kind of happy with that, I think. Yeah, I think that'll do. It's close enough. It's not as good as the one in the slide that I just showed you, although it's getting there, isn't it? Um, last little bit of fettling. Good. Now I'm just going to zoom in because I think I might have missed the guides. I certainly did, didn't I? So let me just drag those so they really are lined up with the guides. Same with this last one. And I think that's going to do. So go back up here to fit slide. I'm going to hit the enter key, lock that all down. Now it's an editable shape. So let's give it a color fill. Let's come over here and give it this turquoise color. Uh, same here. Let's do that. Why is that not picking up? Um, get the outline. So, okay, that's good. 
All right, I'm gonna drag the location pin up one layer, uh, up here, just to keep it on top of the shape. And we need a point at the end. So I'll go back to my shapes menu, click on this triangle. Now, I need to rotate it. So that means going to the arrange tab of the format menu. Um, and I can do a couple of things. I can turn it to my heart's content with the rotation dial here, or I can type in a set number of degrees. Now rotation in Keynote works anti-clockwise. I want this triangle to rotate clockwise, so it's minus 90 degrees. And again, I'm gonna give it that turquoise color. So let's drag that down and drop it there. Um, I'm gonna double click on the shape again. And if I double click the line, yeah, I can get these points to reactivate just because I want that to drop into that arrow a bit more meaningfully. That's okay. All right, now let's group the arrow and the shape. I'm gonna go up to group in my toolbar menu here. So click there once. If you don't see group in your toolbar, go to the view menu right at the top of the screen and customize toolbar is right at the bottom. You'll see all the elements are oscillating there, which means I can drag things out of that menu or drag them in. And then I look here amongst all the icons, I would find group and just drag and drop it into the menu. I've already done that a long time ago, but if you can't find it, try doing that. Okay, so, so far, so good. Somehow that's jumped to the top again. So now the trick is how do we reveal this shape? Um, now I could go to the animate panel and the build in tab and choose a wipe. Uh, let me just slow that down, make it take five seconds, preview it again. But can you see it's revealing the whole shape by the end, whereas I'd like to reveal this shape in three separate phases. And you also have this blurry thing going on, so it's not a hard edge, which I don't like. So wipe transition is not going to do it for me. Um, so I'm gonna use a different technique. I'm gonna come back, get myself any old shape. This rectangle will do. Well, it needs to be a straight-sided shape. And I'm gonna drag that out so it goes top to bottom and all the way from the beginning of the blue shape right to the end of the slide. I'm gonna make it a bright color um, just so you can see it. And in effect, if I click down and hold that once, hold the shift key down to constrain the movement just to the horizontal axis. Basically what I want to do is reveal this much of the shape, then this much of the shape, then the rest of the shape. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, obviously I don't want to have to do it manually, so we're going to use some animation on this rectangle. So I'm, going to, I'm still in my animation menu. I'm going to go to the action tab, add an effect, and move. Now, it's a little bit tricky because it's moving over the top of the original. So we want to find out how far it's moved. So this here is the center of the shape before it moved. This is the center of the shape after it moved. And you can just see these handles here, the top left, uh, middle left and bottom left handles. These are the left hand edge of the rectangle after it's moved. And I want to line those up with this second vertical guide. So I'm just gonna tap with my left arrow key. Uh, one too far, I think. All right, so that now should move the rectangle just to the second vertical guide, and that will reveal the first element of my shape. So let's go to the build order menu here, and it's looking good. Um, let's just drag this down a little bit. Yep, what's it waiting for? It's waiting for a click. Yes, that's what it should be doing. So let's play our slide. Here we are, all you can see is the rectangle, half of the locator pin and a bit of gray. But if I do one right arrow click, you can see that the, um, that the rectangle is moving and slowly revealing the blue shape. Now I'm gonna escape out of that. What will make this effect look way more believable is if I make it the same color as the background, drag the location pin above it. Now when I play the slide, 
you look like you look it seems like you're just looking at a plain uh, gray slide but sure enough as I hit the arrow key it looks like the blue shape is drawing onto the slide but I'm actually just revealing it by moving the gray rectangle so now that we know what we're doing let's click on the rectangle again that's opening up my uh, animate menu the action tab and down here at the bottom you'll see that I can add an action so I'm going to add another move and again I can see the handles on the left hand edge which show me where it's moved to so I'm going to use my right arrow key I could drag it with the mouse but I'm just going to keep tapping on my right arrow until these left hand edge handles line up with the third of the vertical guides then I'm going to add another action um, move again and again I want it to go to this fifth vertical guide so I'll move that over like that okay now I better set some timings on this as well so if I just click up the build order drag this over here so the first build I'm going to come up here and say I want it to take a second and a half um, and we've got acceleration to take in mind here so easing in and out is what happens to the speed at which the object moves over time so easing in is what happens to the speed of the object as it comes into land on its destination. Easing out is what happens to the speed as it moves away from its original location. So we can slowly speed up as we move away from the original location and we can slow down as we glide in to the now location of that object. I can switch that off completely or I can just say I only want to slow down as I come into land or I only want to speed up as I take off from my original position but I'm just going to leave it at easing in and out. Second movement uh, it's going to be a second and a half ease in and out and the third movement second and a half. All right so that's now going to move and gradually reveal my shape and if you just in case you don't believe me let's play our slide here we are nothing to be seen first click we get the first bit of the shape second click reveals a bit more third click reveals the whole thing right to the point of the arrow so so far so good but because this is a journey through time you remember we said at the beginning we wanted this to have the sense of a destination so I'm going to put another shape into the mix here let's go to the shape menu and I'm going to type in target in the search bar that will give me this target just want to make sure it's the same size as the location pin so I'm going to drag the top right anchor drag it diagonally till I get the guidelines telling me it's the same height as the location pin give it the same red color and I want to try and line it up with that arrow point now I can't tell exactly where it is as it stands so what I'm going to do is drag the blue shape group up till it's just below in fact I'm going to do it just on top of the red symbol and now I can tell that I was close but I need to go up and again I'm just using the arrow keys to get that dialed in I think that looks good to me so now I want to drag the archery target to the bottom and I'll drag the group just one layer above it so layers are everything in this game so you need to pay careful attention and you'll notice that I'm using the object list to help me do that now this toggles on and off by doing shift command and L that will remove it shift command L again will make it visible or you can find it in the fourth uh, panel of the view menu where it says here hide object list so I'm using that comprehensively in this tutorial now what I'd like to do though is not have that just sit there let me play this now I'll play my three arrow pushes all well and good now I've got a couple of problems as soon as we get there the target is already there and the gray rectangle hasn't moved far enough to the right to leave me enough space for this archery target so 
I want that archery target to dissolve in and not just sit there waiting. And I also need to move my gray rectangle a little bit. So let's first sort the gray rectangle issue out because that's easy. Get on this. Um, I'm going to click on this red diamond at the bottom here, which will show me the moved state of the rectangle. So I can see here, I've got my handles again on the left-hand edge, and I'm just gonna move them over to this sixth vertical guide. That'll give me enough clearance for the archery target. That should be fine. And then I'm gonna click on the archery target in my object list, and I'm going to build it in using a dissolve. And again, I'm gonna make that one and a half seconds. I can just preview that. That comes up nicely, very good. And if I go to my build order, instead of having that as a separate event, I'm gonna go down here and where it says start on click, I'm going to ask it to happen with build three. So when I click my right arrow key or my space bar for the third time, two things are gonna happen. The rectangle will move to its third and final position and the archery target will start to dissolve in. So let's just play that. One click, revealing, yes. Two click, reveal some more, yes and three, lovely. So we just get that combined rectangle moving out of the way and the red target dissolving up. That looks very pleasing to me. Now I'm being a bit pedantic here, but I can just see this blue shape is a tiny bit lower than the red locator pin. So I'm just gonna click on the red locator pin and give it one click down, that should fix it. Now, speaking of the red locator pin, what I'd actually like to do is have this track us along our journey of presentation preparation. So I'd actually like it to move to each of these guide points at the same time as the gray rectangle does. So I'm gonna click once on it. I'm still in my animate menu here on the right hand side. Again, I'm going to go to the action tab, click on an effect and click move. Now here you're seeing the ghosting effect when you normally have a move set. You get the solid colored version is the original position and the ghosted version is the new position. So I'm just gonna drag the new position to be at the conjunction of the second vertical guide and the baseline. So it should now move alongside the rectangle. And we just need to think about build order here. So again, this location pin is going to move in synchronization with the first mouse click. So down here, instead of on click, I'm gonna say, please do that move with build one. Okay, so let's play the slide and see if that's going to work. Here we are, happy as anything, one click. Oh, we've got it working kind of, but the timing is out, isn't it? So let's stay clicked on our ghosted version and we can see the problem. We've only given it one second, but we gave the rectangle one and a half. So quick play, just that first click, make sure that's working. Look at that, perfection. That's exactly what we wanted. I am going to move both the original and the moved version of this pin down by one more, just to get that right. So since we're, click away, click on there, click the red diamond so that I've got the ghosted version highlighted. Down at the bottom here of my action tab, I can click once more and make another move. And again, I just drag to this third vertical guide and I'm gonna do another move to take me to the sixth vertical guide, which is where the gray rectangle finished up. However, we know that the gray, uh, the red archery target is waiting for us here. So I don't want this to look messy. So actually I'm gonna fade this out so that by the time it's finished moving, it's actually disappeared. And I can do that by adding one more action, which is an opacity change. I'm gonna let that take a second and a half and I'm gonna drag the opacity to zero. So first time we click the mouse, or the right arrow or the space bar, this locator pin is gonna to move to this position. The next time we click, it will go here. And the next time we click, it will go here and fade out. So let's just make sure these happen all in the right order. 
So this opacity change needs to come down ready for the third click and so does this move. These both need to happen with um, build five. Okay, and then this move needs to happen with this rectangle move. So click on that and this is gonna happen with build three. So first time I click, the rectangle and the locator pin will move once. Second time I click, the rectangle and the locator pin will move again. And the third time I click, the rectangle will move, the locator pin will move, the locator pin will fade out to nothing and the archery target will dissolve in. So if that all works, that will be a miracle. Let's see. Here we go, click once, looking good. Click two, Ooh, the timing's off, but it's moving in the right direction. And three, timing's off, but we can see that uh, the generally right things are happening. So what's wrong with, I can already see, we've got the timings wrong here. So let's click the second location, that's okay third location needs to go to one and a half and this is one and a half so is it just that one that was wrong um, let's just check the rectangle as well show its actions one and a half seconds yeah are they all one and a half seconds that one is that one is yeah okay let's just try one more time you can see how many times you have to test your work can't you that looks good Aha, uh -huh, that looks good. That does not look good. What is the problem there? Something's wrongly timed. So let's click here. Let's open up. It's like it's not moving, but it is moving well enough. One and a half seconds. One and a half seconds. What is happening? So one and a half, 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 ah, one second, that's why. There we go, for the move, and the opacity was right, so it was the move there that was wrong. Okay, test it one more time. There we go, yes, there we go, yes, there we go, look at that. Perfect. All right, now we're cooking on gas. Now, the next thing I'd like to do is to label these three phases. So let's go to format, uh, get ready for that. And let's go to text here and let's put splurge. That's the title for this first phase. Highlight that. I'm going to use rock grotesque font. I'm going to use bold condensed. Uh, condensed bold even. I'm going to make that white so it shows up and I think somewhere, let's try 125 to start with. That looks good and I'm going to bring this up so it's centered between my guides as close as I can get to that. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, I'm also going to animate this text so that it dissolves in as the red locator pin is moving. So uh, let's build in using a dissolve. One and a half seconds seems to be the golden amount of time. But you know what? I know from experience that if I bring up white text against a dark background, even if I say take one and a half seconds to appear, it seems to appear much faster than that because it doesn't take much contrast for the text to look readable. So even though it's at 20, 30, 40%, it'll still look like the text is finished moving. So I'm gonna cheat and make this 2.5 seconds. So that in the one and a half seconds of movement of the red pin, we still seem to be dissolving up the text. You'll see what I mean when we actually play this. Now. Here's a trick too. I'm gonna to click on this text and do Command D to duplicate it. I'm gonna move that into position for the second area and call it Edit. All right, now when I click on this, notice though it's inherited the dissolve settings from Splurge. And when I duplicate this again to make Organize, the same thing's gonna happen. 
again. Now we also need to, well, let's make them word. And we need to center between, um, well, at least this guide here and that guide there, because the arrow point should come to about there. So that should be right. And again, that's dissolved, inheriting the settings from the previous words. So back to our build order. So splurge needs to be dissolving in whilst build one is happening. So that goes with build one. Edit goes with build, what's, sorry, I need to highlight edit, with build four. And organize needs to go with build seven. All right, so let's quickly play that. Nice, see what I mean about the splurge fading in? You get that sense of movement of the text throughout the whole one and a half seconds that the red pin is moving. Same thing happens with edit and the same thing happens with organize. So it's all looking very good. The last thing I want to add is some lines just to define where splurge finishes and edit begins and the same with the gap between edit and organize. So let's go up to shape, get rid of the target click on the first line shape and I'll get a 45 degree black line. I'm going to go up to my format menu, click the style tab. Let's make it, I don't know, 15. Looks about right. Let's make it white. Um, let's grab this top handle and I'm going to hold the shift key down so that as I move my cursor, it will move in 45 degree increments. And that way I know it's gonna be perfectly vertical. I'm gonna drag that up. I want to center it on this second vertical guide. I'm gonna drag the bottom handle and go down to the baseline. And in terms of line type, let's make it a dotted line. And again, I'm going to duplicate that and do the same thing between edit and organize and duplicate again just to show the end of the organize phase. Now with this line we uh, need to allow some room for that archery target symbol don't we? So I'm going to drag the bottom handle, I'm going to hold the shift key so it goes perfectly vertical and I'm going to use these uh, intelligent guides and when it's level with the top of the red locator pin I'm going to leave it there. Now let's animate these lines, go back to animate, add an effect and this time we get an option of line draw where we can make it look like that line got drawn on. Now the bottom of the line is considered to be the beginning or the start point. I need to run that upside down um, and I can also choose to make the drawing effect ap uh, apply to any endpoints that are set but we haven't got any so it doesn't make any difference. Just preview that, that looks good. Um, should have done that first because then when I duplicated the lines they would have inherited it, but won't take but a moment to do them. And I'm gonna select the third one, which should be the top one in my object list and line draw again. One thing that we need to do is swap that round and let's make these one and a half seconds as well. Click here, see how I can use the object list to select the line that I want to operate on. My screen capture button keeps sliding in there. All right, well, I have a feeling that could be it, ladies and gentlemen. So let me present to you the three phases of the presentation preparation journey. Phase one is all about the slurge, slurge, splurge, and no lines. You know what we've done wrong? Let's go to build order. They're all sitting at the bottom waiting for a mouse click. So again, drag this one up and make it happen with build one. Move this one up, click on it and make it happen with build five. And this one, make it happen with build nine. All right, I really do think we're done now. So ladies and gentlemen, for the last and final time, the presentation preparation journey, 
Step one, the splurge. Oh, and it's not. The red locator pin is not at the top. <laughs> so I accept that I now have no credibility, but honestly, this is the presentation preparation journey. Step one, the splurge, yay. Step two, the edit. And step three, the organize. Look at that. Okay, thank you. And thank you for bearing with me on this somewhat lengthy tutorial. Thanks for listening. I've enjoyed being with you. Hope you have too. And we'll catch you on the next one.